This is really happening, guys. I've been in the freshwater hobby my entire life, and now for the first time, I'm gonna try to set up a saltwater aquarium. It's a completely new journey. Probably gonna make some mistakes along the way, but I'm super excited about it. Let's get started. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the plan, um, some of the equipment, a bit about the how and the why I'm starting up a saltwater aquarium. We're going to get the tank set up, fill up with water, but that's it. So there's not going to be any fish in this video. There's not going to be any corals in this video. It's purely just a startup. I really want to take my time with this new project and just take things uh, one step at a time. So we'll get the, tanks, the tank set up, start the cycle, and then we can do more research before we take the next step. Now, to be honest with you, I think the main reason why I never tried saltwater earlier is simply because it just seems very complicated. And it seems to be very different compared to freshwater as well. I mean, you've got the blue light, you've got the sump, you've got the protein skimmer, all these things that I've never used before, you know? So I kind of just stayed away from it. But then not too long ago, I kind of stumbled on this new way of keeping a saltwater aquarium, and that is uh, with macroalgae. I think I only, did, only saw it for the first time like a year ago. I'm sure macroalgae has been around for much longer than that but yeah i only discovered it like a year ago and then i started to do started to do more research but then i quickly found out that here in the netherlands like nobody was selling macroalgae none of these shops were selling macroalgae it was very difficult to yeah to to find it so i kind of just put that whole project to the side but it kind of just it kind of stayed in the in the corner of my eye you know so now like a year later i feel like it's slowly becoming more popular and some shops some shops are starting to sell some macroalgae so I decided to go for it. So I think I have sort of like three main reasons why I've decided to go for a macroalgae saltwater aquarium. First reason is simply because macroalgae reminds me of plants. I mean, you have them in green, red, orange, so it kind of just reminds me of a saltwater version of a planted tank. I really like that. The second reason is because the equipment necessary for a macroalgae aquarium seems to be a little bit more simple. I could be wrong, but the setups that I'm seeing on Instagram they don't have the blue light, they don't have the sump, they don't have the protein skimmer, so it kind of just seems a little bit more simple. That really spoke to me. Yeah, the third reason is it kind of seems like an easier step into the saltwater hobby. I mean, a coral reef seems very daunting and very scary, and but because this kind of looks similar to a planted tank, it kind of seems like it's an easier step into the saltwater hobby. So I could be wrong about that, of course, but yeah, I think if we manage to get these uh, macroalgae to grow, then we can st slowly start thinking about some inhabitants, some fish and some shrimp. And if all that, if that all goes well, then we can maybe st start thinking about doing another setup with a, yeah, like a small coral reef, for example. That'd be really cool. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you will know that I love setting up nano tanks. So this macroalgae aquarium is going to be a nano setup as well. I want to have it displayed on the shelf. So I'm thinking of using this empty UNS 30C. Let's actually take it out of the shelf. Let's move it to the table so we can set it up properly. Here we go, this is where it all begins. We have a 30 centimeter optic wide rimless cube. This one is from Optum Nature Systems. And then the light is a Chihiros W RGB Slim, the 30 centimeter version. And this is a fresh water plant light, but this should be able to grow uh, macroalgae as well. So the plan is to set up this 30 centimeter cube with pretty much the exact same equipment that I would normally use in a fresh water planted tank. And of course I'm doing it for myself to make it easier for myself, but also to make it easier for you guys, because I'm pretty sure that the majority of people that are watching right now probably don't even have a saltwater aquarium, maybe not even have an interest in a saltwater aquarium, but maybe if I present it this way, and by showing you things that are more familiar, it'll be a little bit easier to understand, and maybe also easier to inspire you guys. Because, well maybe not after this video, but maybe once this entire setup is done, we have the macroalgae in there, we have the inhabitants, the fish, the shrimp in there, It'll be really cool if I have inspired a few people to have, to have a go at a saltwater macroalgae aquarium as well. So I think if I present it this way, that, that might be a little bit easier. So the first thing I want to do is to add a background to this aquarium. And for that, I'm going to use the same stuff I always use, this plastic window foil. I also have it on the, uh, the beta tank over here, on the crystal red shrimp tank. I have it on the Oasis escaper line. And this cube down below here has the same thing. And it just kind of helps to First of all, hide the, uh, the wall behind the tank, but also to hide any wires or tubing, and it just, uh, I just like how it looks.
Okay, that's the background done. Looking good. So now we can move on to the rest of the equipment, but I don't think there's actually that much left. I mean, we already have the light. I think the only thing we still need is a filter and a heater. And for that, I've decided to go for the Oasa Filter Smart Thermo 100. I use these Oasa filters on my planted tanks as well, but they're perfectly suitable for salt water tanks. And this one already has the heater uh, built in, so we don't need a heater visible inside the aquarium. So yeah, really excited about this one. Um, now normally in, in all these salt water tanks, you also see a lot of like wave makers. But I think, I mean, this is quite a powerful filter. This one does 600 liters per hour. It's only a 30, li 30 liter tank, so we basically have 20 times turnover. And I'm not sure, I could be wrong, but I think these um, macro algae tanks also don't need that much flow. So I think with just this, uh, just this canister filter, we should be okay. And the only thing I don't really like about this external filter is the plastic inflow and outflow. It just doesn't look very nice. So I'm gonna swap them out for some glass lily pipes. This is the mini lily pipe set from F-Zone. I'll leave a link in the video description, but yeah, of course this is totally optional. It's purely for aesthetics, so you don't need this, but it just looks nice, you know? But yeah, I think that's pretty much all the equipment that we need. So we're gonna set up the filter later, of course, once everything is done. I think we can now move on to escaping the aquarium itself. So this is where things kind of start to change a little bit. Normally I would start with a plant substrate, but we're now starting to incorporate some salt water products. And the first product is BioSand from Aqua Forest. Now throughout this video and the coming salt water videos, you will see me use some products from Aqua Forest. They've actually offered to help me out with this new project. So all the Aqua Forest products that you will see are sponsored. Super excited about that. So obviously I've done my fair share of research on salt water setups. And one thing you always see people use is live sand. I'm not sure if this is actually sand from the ocean that they've kind of just harvested or if it's just sand with some seawater. But I kind of thought that this was the exact same thing, but it's slightly different. This stuff right here is called calcium carbonate. So it's just very small grains. And then they've added two bottles for the bacteria. So here we have the first one, this is the bacteria. And then this second bottle is food for the bacteria. So the idea is that you mix this with some salt water, then you add everything to the bag, you let it sit for 24 hours, and then you have live sand. So it's a little bit different, but pretty interesting. So I think we're gonna be a little bit stubborn and not follow these instructions. First of all, this is way too much sand just for this aquarium alone. I only need a little bit. And I also have a few other products from Aquaforest that also contain these beneficial bacteria. So I think I'm gonna use those and then eventually those bacteria will find their way into the sand as well. So I'm just gonna use the sand on its own. Let's just add a, a thin layer to the bottom. Okay, let's just sand in, thin layer in front, a little bit thicker layer towards the back, just like I always do with aquascaping. I'm not sure if this is enough sand, but I might add a little bit more later. Let's now move on to the hardscape. Now normally hardscape in a saltwater aquarium is made with this stuff, reef rock. This is an artificial product, it looks really nice, but it, it kind of immediately says that, okay, this is a saltwater aquarium, it's not very subtle, you know? I want this to be, to just blend in a little bit more. You know, this nano tank is gonna go on my shelf with all my other planted tanks. So I kind of want it to almost look like a planted tank as well. So I decided to use this stuff instead. Just regular lava rock. Well, it's not really regular lava rock. This stuff has a little bit more detail to it. And I've used this recently in one of my planted tanks as well. And I mean, this stuff is very porous, so it's also very good for beneficial bacteria. And I think this would work just fine in a saltwater aquarium as well. So yeah, I'm gonna go for this stuff. And this stuff I'm gonna keep, of course. I'm gonna use this when we are actually gonna set up like a proper coral tank or reef tank. So I've got three pieces of lava rock, a big one, medium size, and a smaller one. So let's see if we can come up with a nice and simple layout. Okay, a slight change of plan. I couldn't really come up with a nice layout with those just those three rocks, so I've added a fourth rock and just made a little structure in the center. And I think this looks pretty cool. It also has um, a few caves here and there, so if we do end up buying some shrimp or I don't know what kind of saltwater creatures we can get for this small size, then yeah, they have some places to hide as well, so I quite like that. I do think we need a little bit more sand in the foreground though.
Yeah, I think it looks a little bit better with more sand. Now just checking this rock on top is a little bit wobbly. So I'm thinking I'm gonna just glue the hard skip together with liquid super glue and cotton pads like I always do. Yeah, so cotton pads and liquid type Ciano Acrylate super glue. I always use this in my freshwater setups as well. It becomes completely inert under water and I'm thinking it should be just fine in salt water as well. Okay, that's the hardscape done. I think it looks really good, really happy with it. So I think we can now move this tank back to the shelf and then fill it up with water. Or should we first set up the filter? Yeah, I think move this tank to the shelf, set up the filter, and then we can fill it up with water. Well, it definitely does not really blend in with the rest, but I think that's brilliant because of all the white sand. Right now it's really white, white. Also, once we add in some green macroalgae, we'll kind of blend in a little bit more, I guess. Okay, so let's check out the filter. Tubing, warranty, the filter itself. And then we have like a bunch of accessories, attachments, and some media. So the heater is already inside the filter but I'm not sure if there's any media also already in here. So let's just quickly open it up. Oh yeah, so we got a sponge over here for the inflow and then a sponge to cover the outflow as well and then the heater. Yeah, so we basically have a lot of mechanical filtration with all these sponges, but not a lot of biological, not a lot of space for biological filtration. So I'm gonna slightly modify the filter because I want to add some of this stuff. It's another product from Aquaforest, a live biofill. It's basically filter media already, already seeded with uh, nitrifying bacteria. So I wanna make sure that we get a good amount inside this, uh, this little filter. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking to remove this sponge, this one here, and basically cut it in half. There's a little hole here for the intake. So I'm basically just gonna cut it here, remove this portion, and then we have a little bit more space for the biological filtration. We can also add some media into this filter chamber then at least we have some biological filtration in this filter. Here we go, the left one is filled all the way to the top, the middle one filled halfway, and I'm thinking on this side add a little bit of fine filter floss just to polish the water, and we can change it out every few weeks or so. But then again if I add it here there's a good chance that the filter will clog really quickly and will the the flow will slow down, so maybe I just add a little bit over here. I think that should work as well. Let's just give it a try. So the tank is back on the shelf, filter is prepared as well, so we can now fill it up with water. Obviously for a saltwater aquarium we can't use tap water, we need to use RO water, reverse osmosis water. Uh, most of my planted tanks are running on tap water, but I do occasionally set, up, set one up with RO water as well, so I already had an RO filter. Um, I've roughly prepared 30 liters. Hopefully that's enough for the aquarium and the filter. If not, we can like, make a little bit more. I have not yet added any salt to this RO water. I'm thinking you just fill up with water and then add the salt into the aquarium. I think, I think this is okay because we don't have any livestock in, in here just yet. Obviously from now on, if we're doing water changes, we need to prepare salt water beforehand before we start doing water changes. But I think for now it's okay to just add the salt into the aquarium. Need to come up with a better solution for this but over here i have 20 liters let's uh, start with this okay so the tank is all filled up with water so we can now add in the salt of course for that i have another aqua force product so they sent me a big bag of reef salt i've actually no idea if there's different types of salt but this is the bag that i got it's very simple there's just instructions on the back here and we want a salinity of 33 ppt and for that we need to add 390 grams of salt per 10 liters of water so i've used roughly 20 liters in here i still need to fill up the filter i think the filter is going to take another two or three liters so i think i'm just going to measure out 800 grams then we can add it in 
and after a while measure the salinity and then we can always adjust it. Okay, we're uh, up and running our first saltwater aquarium. Super excited. Yeah, filter's up and running, um, salt is added, and I've also switched on the heater. Heater is set to 25 degrees Celsius, so that should be good. I think right now we just have to wait a little bit, wait for all this salt to dissolve. And after that's dissolved, we can measure the salinity and check if we're in the right range. Now there's one issue that we need to address with this aquarium, and that is evaporation. I mean, I went for, I went for a rimless aquarium, but evaporation in a saltwater aquarium is a bit of a bigger issue than in a freshwater aquarium because evaporation is going to increase the salinity levels of the water. So we want to try to keep the salinity levels as stable as possible. So I'm, I have a few pieces of scrap glass, so I want to see if I can make a lid out of this. Right, well, I'll save you the tragic glass cutting clips, but we managed to get there in the end. We now have a, a decent lid it's not too bad could be worse um, it's also been a few hours so we can now check the salinity levels and for that you need a refractometer or whatever you want to pronounce it basically just a device to check the salinity levels or yeah you think you can do multiple things with it but we just need it for the salinity so the point is that you open this up then you take a little uh, water sample i think you're supposed to put three drops one two three and then you close this thing and I think you're supposed to like wait 30 seconds or so and after 30 seconds you check you have to hold up against the light you check and it should be around 35 ppt and right now we are at 34 so we need a little bit more salt Okay, I've added a little bit more salt and then in an hour or so I'll do another test with the refractometer and I'll keep repeating that process until we reach the desired salt levels. For now I want to add one more product from Aquaforest, the BioS, and these are again nitrifying bacteria. So I'm supposed to add one drop every day for the first two weeks. And then hopefully after two weeks this aquarium is cycled and then we can start thinking about adding some microalgae. So super excited about that. Overall very excited about this new project. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments, yeah, what do you think about me starting a saltwater aquarium? Let me know if maybe you are interested in doing something like this yourself as well. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. See you next time.